Normal forms are a really nice idea in logic. It's a set way for a sentence to look so that just by looking at it, we can see what it means and whether it's going to be true or false. Let's see how to use them. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. This is a series of videos introducing the basic concepts of logic. We've been looking at entailment, equivalence, equivalent schemes and rewriting. Now we're going to put that to use in rewriting sentences into fixed normal forms. We're going to look at negation normal form, disjunctive normal form and conjunctive normal form. If you're finding the videos useful, why don't you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get updates. Okay. Okay, so let's see what normal forms are and how we go about rewriting sentences into them. A normal form is a set way for a sentence to look based on its syntax, based on its grammar, which allows us to glean some information about what that sentence means. We're going to look at three normal forms, negation normal form, disjunctive normal form and conjunctive normal form. And we're going to see how we can transform any sentence of propositional logic into those normal forms. Let's begin with the simplest case, negation normal form. A sentence is in negation normal form when if there's any negation symbols in that sentence at all, they appear immediately in front of the P's, the Q's and the R's. So any negation symbol has to be immediately in front of a primitive sentence letter. These sentences are in negation normal form because here we have a negation and it's immediately in front of P. And ditto here. The negations are immediately in front of P and Q. So they're in negation normal form. But these two aren't in negation normal form. So this one, it's not in negation normal form because these two negations here, they're not immediately in front of the P. OK, this one gets in the way, as it were. And this sentence, it's not in negation normal form because this negation here, it's not immediately in front of the P. If we drew the syntax tree for this sentence, we would have a negation right at the top as the main connective, followed by the and, and then followed by the P and the Q. So if we think about negation normal form in terms of a syntax tree, the only place a negation can appear is in the node immediately above a P, a Q or an R. So immediately above a leaf node. Now, even though these two aren't in negation normal form, it's pretty easy to see how they can be transformed into negation normal form. For this one, we would just use double negation elimination to give us this one. And for this one, we would use the De Morgan law to give us this one. So putting a sentence in negation normal form is usually pretty simple. It's a case of, as it were, pushing the negations down the syntax tree. And to do that, we're going to use the De Morgan laws because they allow us to transform something like this, whose main connective is a negation, into something like this, with the negations further down the syntax tree. And we're going to use double negation elimination. OK, those rules are pretty simple to use. So putting something in negation normal form is usually pretty easy. OK. Let's have a look at disjunction normal form, or we can call it disjunctive normal form. Something's in disjunctive normal form when it is a disjunction of a conjunction of literals. What's a literal? Well, it's a P, a Q, an R, or a not P, a not Q, not R. So that thing we were just talking about with negation normal form, basically we're looking at making literals, OK? All the negation symbols are immediately in front of a P, a Q or an R. So if something's in disjunctive normal form, it's also got to be in negation normal form. OK, so let's look at an example. Have a look at this sentence here. If we're going with the official definition of our language that we introduced a couple of videos back, you'll notice that we should have some extra brackets in here. Maybe they go like this. But because this is a disjunction here, it doesn't matter where those brackets go. So we're going to count this as a disjunction with three disjuncts. And if we look within the brackets at these conjunctions, we should have some brackets in there. But because we've got associativity, it doesn't matter where they go. So we're going to count this and this as a conjunction with three conjuncts. We're actually going to allow conjunctions and disjunctions to have any number of conjuncts and disjuncts. So this is a disjunction with three disjuncts. 
this one. It's the usual case. It's a conjunction with two disjuncts, but we're also going to allow this case a disjunction with just one disjunct. Now that might sound a bit weird. How is it a disjunction if it's only got one disjunct? Well, it, it kind of fits the truth table. A disjunction is true if at least one of the disjuncts is true, so we're going to count this disjunction as being true if this thing's true. So it's fine, okay? It's just a special limiting case of what we're counting as a disjunction for the purposes of doing these normal forms. Exactly the same is going to apply for conjunctions. So here is a conjunction with three conjuncts. This is the usual case, a conjunction with two conjuncts. But we're also going to include the limiting case of a conjunction with just one conjunct. So if we think about this chap here on his own, he's going to count both as a conjunction with one conjunct and as a disjunction with one disjunct for the purposes of these normal forms. P on its own, it's going to count as being in disjunctive normal form. But here's something that isn't in disjunctive normal form. P and Q or R, okay? There's no way of looking at this as a disjunction because if we look at the syntax tree, this conjunction is higher up the syntax tree than this disjunction here. We can't look at this as a disjunction of conjuncts, at least not until we have transformed it using, in this case, the distribution rule. So any sentence of propositional logic can be transformed into disjunctive normal form. Here's the example we just looked at that isn't in disjunctive normal form, but if we apply a distribution rule, we immediately get it in disjunctive normal form. It's a disjunction of conjunctions of literals. There's a three-step strategy for transforming any sentence into disjunction normal form, and it goes like this. First step, we're going to eliminate all the arrows and the double arrows. So we're going to transform double arrows into single arrows, and then we're going to eliminate the single arrows using the equivalence rule, rewriting them in terms of disjunction and negation. Second step, we're going to put that sentence into negation normal form using the De Morgan and double negation elimination rules. Thirdly, we're going to use distribution to put it into disjunction normal form. So by the time we've got it in negation normal form in the second step, the conjunction and disjunction symbols might not be in the right form. So all we need to do then is rearrange them using distribution rules. We might need to repeat that step a number of times. So let's look at an example. Let's look at this sentence here. It's quite a long way from disjunction normal form. It's got two arrows in. So the first step is to eliminate those. So we're going to replace if Q then P with not Q or P. And we're going to replace if P then R with not P or R. That's already in negation normal form because the only negations are here and here and they're right in front of a Q and a P. They're literals. So we don't need to do step two. We just need to use step three, the distribution rules, and we're going to try to target this one here. We've actually got some options here. We can either distribute this over this or we could distribute this over this. Let's do it the first way. OK, so we're taking this and distributing it over this. So we get not Q or P and not P. The not P is coming from here. Or this bit again, not Q or P and R. The R is coming from there. Now, that's still not in disjunction normal form because although our main connective is now a disjunction, look at these disjuncts here. They themselves aren't in disjunction normal form. OK, so we need to sort out what's going on in here. We need to apply the distribution rule again. So we're going to distribute this over this, giving us not Q and not P or P and not P or not Q and R or P and R. And that is in disjunction normal form. Now let's move on to conjunction normal form. This is pretty much the same as disjunction normal form, but we just switch around the conjunctions and the disjunctions. So to be in conjunction normal form, a sentence has to be a conjunction of disjunctions of literals. So exactly the same as before, but it's got to be conjunctions, the main connectives. So this sentence is in conjunctive normal form because it's a conjunction with three conjuncts and each of the conjuncts is a disjunction. And just like before, we're allowing conjunctions to have any number of conjuncts and disjunctions to have any number of disjuncts. So this sentence is in conjunctive normal form. This sentence 
isn't because its main connective is a disjunction. But it's quite easy to see how to transform that into conjunctive normal form. We would just use a distribution rule. So again, any sentence can be rewritten as an equivalent sentence in conjunctive normal form. Again, we've got a three-step strategy for that. First up, just like before we eliminate the arrows and the double arrows, we put it into negation normal form, and then we use the distribution rules. I won't run through an example of conjunctive normal form because it's basically exactly the same as putting a sentence into disjunctive normal form. Just before we finish up today, let's go back to disjunction normal form just for a little bit and let's see how we can read off valuations from a sentence in disjunctive normal form. So this is the example we looked at a moment ago and we transformed it into this sentence. So this sentence here is in disjunctive normal form. How can we read off a valuation from this sentence? It's actually pretty straightforward, but let's just go through the reasoning, okay? For a disjunction to be true, one of the disjuncts has to be true. So to make this sentence true, we need at least one of these to be true. Each of those is a conjunction, and for a conjunction to be true, both conjuncts have to be true. And because those conjuncts are all literals, either P or not P, it basically tells us what truth value P has to have, okay? So here, Q's gotta be false, P's got to be false, P's got to be true, P's got to be false, etc. So we go through each disjunct and it gives us one valuation. So this one says Q and P both false. This one says Q false are true. This one says P and R both true. And this one, well, it says that P's true and false. So actually this one is no use. Okay, this one is one that we can basically just chuck out. But this one and this one and this one provide us with valuations that will make this sentence true. And because all of these are equivalent, all of those valuations will make the original sentence true. So that's a way that we can read off valuations for a sentence by first of all transforming it into disjunction normal form and then looking at what the disjuncts say. One clarification to add to that, these aren't full valuations, okay? This one tells us P and Q are both false. What about R? We've got R in this sentence, but this disjunct doesn't tell us what to do with R. Basically, it doesn't matter. It could be either. This gives us a sufficient condition for making this true. If Q and P are both false, this sentence is true. So you could make R true, you could make R false. So in fact, this disjunct gives us two valuations. P, Q, R, false, P, Q, false, and R, true. Two different valuations that will make this sentence true. In fact, all of these give us two valuations. That one doesn't give us any valuations. Okay, so there you've got negation normal form, disjunctive normal form, and conjunctive normal form. It's really nice to be able to write sentences into these forms in propositional logic. Okay, so that is all for today. If you found this stuff interesting, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? I would really appreciate it. If you've got comments on this material, and I know it can be difficult to do this stuff sometimes, put me a question down in the comments below. Okay, that is all for today. I will see you guys next time.